In today's video, we're going to talk about an astronomical mystery of the Tabis star, also known as WTF star. I'm going to explain to you what the mystery is all about and help you understand that sometimes keeping the scientific mind is more important than trying to explain everything using science fiction. Welcome to What the Math. So the story of Tabby Star starts with the so-called Planet Hunters. This is uh, a website I've talked about previously where the volunteers uh, from around the world basically use data from Kepler's telescope to try to help scientists uncover new planets um, that uh, Kepler has actually looked at. But because there's so much data available, it's very difficult for a few scientists, so they often employ uh, volunteers to help them. And it's very important to actually use real people for this and not just um, algorithms and artificial intelligence because if the AI was used, we would have never discovered this particular star to begin with because it would actually be ignored by uh, any kind of a program that you write to, to look for these planets. Anyway, so in February of 2016, Tabitha Boyajian um, talked about and published her paper called Where the Flux. Um, if you read this again, where the flux is also WTF. And that's because basically that's how she felt when she saw what uh, the planet hunters have discovered. And what they have discovered is a very unusual dimming of a starlight that has never really been seen before. As a matter of fact, out of all 150,000 stars we've observed so far, this is the first one that has this particular dimming. And Tabitha Boyajian, as well as several other scientists, still have trouble explaining what exactly is going on here. And for this reason, uh, this star is, is currently the biggest astronomical mystery to us, and is also one of the coolest stars to try to use scientific mind to try to understand what's going on in here. Anyway, so in her TED talk, uh, Tabitha Boyajian describes um, how basically this particular star was discovered by the volunteers and um, what they actually think is going on in there and why they actually think that uh, there's a slight chance that there might be alien life in there. Uh, unofficially, this star is uh, known as Tabby star. Uh, officially, it's known as KIC 8462852. Now, this particular star is about 1500 light years away from us. Uh, it's about 50% larger and more massive than our sun, and it's, it's a main sequence star. So, in a sense, it's very similar to our sun, just a little bit bigger. And all of the data uh, for the star observation came from Kepler telescope over a period of about three and a half years, uh, between 2011 and 2014. And so, uh, during that period, several dimming events were actually observed, and the fact that they were so large, as a matter of fact, um, at some point, 22% of sunlight was dimmed for days, um, compared to like 1% that would occur if Saturn passed in front of our sun, made this a very unusual observation. So, first of all, uh, a lot of the sunlight or starlight was actually blocked. And second of all, um, some of these dims occurred without any kind of periodicity. So, even though there was uh, a slight periodicity of about 750 days, uh, for the most part, these were kind of unpredictable and somewhat random. Now, we were originally planning to actually watch this star again in 2015, but unfortunately Kepler telescope broke down during that time uh, and has only been fixed recently, so we will only see a potential another dimming event, which would of course prove the periodicity of these events, uh, sometime in May of 2017 or a year from now. But I guess the interesting thing about uh, these events is that we're not really sure what's causing them. So one of the explanations was that maybe, just maybe, this is a bunch of asteroids and comets passing in front of the star and just blocking the sunlight. But this would actually require something like 600,000 comets all at once passing in front of the star. Uh, that's a lot of comets. And, but even though it's unlikely, it is possible. But another more esoteric explanation, and that seems to be very popular online right now because almost every YouTube video I've watched so far talks about it, um, is actually a proposition by a person from the Penn State uh, University uh, by the name of Jason Wright, who talks about an alien megastructure, specifically something called a Dyson Sphere. 
Now, a Dyson sphere has been proposed by uh, a person by the name Dyson a long time ago. Basically, this would be an alien megastructure that would be so large that it would basically cover the entire star and would try to absorb all of its energy directly and would essentially power the future alien civilization that way. Um, and what he suggested is that what we're seeing here is that it's a Dyson sphere that's currently being constructed slowly and um, as it's being constructed, it's basically dimming some of the starlight. Now, what made this theory even more uh, probable is another finding by another person by the name of uh, Dr. Schaefer, uh, who discovered that over the last 100 years, this star seems to have lost 20% of its luminosity, which would suggest that basically this Dyson sphere has been slowly built around uh, the last 100 years, blocking some of the light of this advanced home system of some sort of advanced civilization. And uh, it's either basically blocking the starlight or is sucking the energy out of the star and making it produce less starlight. Because naturally, such star would become brighter and not dimmer over time. And Dr. Boyajian actually mentions this in her TED talk as well, and mentions that um, SETI, or Search for Ext Extraterrestrial Intelligence, has actually been asked to investigate this particular star, and they've used their um, um, Allen telescope array to try to hear signals or something coming from the star's direction, but nothing was found. And what uh, kind of discredits this theory even more is that and I guess this is where science fiction ends and science, real science begins, um, is that the dimming event that I just talked about, so the dimming over the uh, last 100 years, was most likely caused by the changes in the types of telescopes that we started using over the last 100 years. So basically, it wasn't that the star became dimmer, it's just that we actually changed uh, the devices that, we, that we've used over the, uh, the last 100 years that we used to observe these stars. Now, this was actually discovered by uh, several people, specifically, an, an amateur astronomer by the name of Michael Hipke from, from Germany who used uh, data from these old data plates from Harvard University and uh, many of these data plates seems to have shown that there was dimming in other stars as well. So it's not that the stars are dimming, it's more likely that we just changed uh, our instrumentation and uh, because of the changes in telescopes, this dimming has actually been observed artificially. Okay, so what about the sudden drop in luminosity over the 750-day period then? Um, well, since we missed our chance to see it again last year, and since we'll only see it again in May of 2017, uh, we're not really sure exactly what's happening there. But if we see it again in May of 2017, it will mean that it's caused by something that periodically orbits the star every 750 days or so. And so some of the potentially cool and plausible explanations uh, that are scientific include, well, first of all, this is one of the explanations that Tabata Boyajian proposes as well. Um, it's possible that we've actually observed uh, a planetary destruction. Maybe, just maybe, a planet has actually just been destroyed in the star system or experienced a very, very large collision and has all of these debris flying around space that block the starlight that's uh, coming our way. But eventually this uh, debris will possibly recombine again into another planet, and so we might be observing a planet that has been destroyed and might recombine again. But because these events are super rare, scientists don't really think that it's that. As a matter of fact, chances of us uh, detecting one such event is ridiculously rare. And because we haven't seen any infrared signatures that indicated a large explosion, we don't think that it's a very possible event, even though it, it is uh, potentially probable. Another explanation is that maybe this is a planet that experiencing very heavy bombardment by large asteroids, similar to the bombardment that our moon experienced something like 3.8 billion years ago, that is causing this large dust cloud to be formed around the planet. But once again, we didn't really detect any infrared signatures indicating any collisions. So even though a dust cloud would explain the dimming, we didn't see any heat signatures indicating collisions. So we're once again not sure if this is a possible explanation. And the third explanation is, well, maybe there is a protoplanetary disk where planets are still being formed and some of these planetary um, protobodies have actually come in front of you and uh, caused the star to dim. Uh, but further analysis uh, found no such disk, uh, or at least we haven't seen one. So it's unlikely that there is a disk. 
um, even though this would actually be a good explanation as well because we would be able to then see how certain planets are formed in a, in not a new but a somewhat developed system but because we don't seem to see any disks around the star we're not sure if protoplanetary disk is a good explanation either now my personal favorite is this number four explanation it's possible that there are actually several planets with very, very large rings similar to J1407b that we talked about previously. And this would actually explain the dimming, the lack of infrared light, and of course the fact that this is not a periodic dimming because there are more than one planet that have these very massive rings that are blocking a lot of starlight. And so even though this would actually explain why there are very large dips in brightness, it would actually take some time for us to confirm this because we would actually need to look for these planets in more detail and possibly look for infrared signatures coming from these large gas giants or some other planets that may have these super large rings, um, which would actually make this particular star system very unique in that it has not one, but two or possibly even several uh, planets that have these super massive rings orbiting around them. But since this is just a speculation for now and we have no actual proof, uh, this theory might take some time to actually materialize and be proven correctly. And unfortunately, the best explanation, number five explanation, is uh, essentially the explanation that Dr. Tabitha Boyajian proposes as well, and herself doesn't particularly like it either. Basically, uh, this is the most boring explanation. So a swarm of very large cold comets that are uh, disintegrating because they were kicked closer to the star by the nearby red dwarf. So there is a red dwarf uh, somewhat close to the star, something like 900 astronomical units away from it, as a matter of fact. And if this red dwarf um, accidentally kicked a bunch of comets, uh, closer to the star, as they would approach it, they would start disintegrating and create uh, these dust clouds that would then block a lot of the starlight. And you wouldn't need too many of these comets, and they would have to be just regular cold comets, uh, which would produce no infrared light either. Um, but this would once again require quite a lot of these comets, very close to one another. So even though this is kind of the best explanation, um, we're not really sure if this is what's happening, because... It is once again a little bit too far-fetched and you would need a lot of these comets coming relatively close to one another and then start disintegrating at the same time to produce this kind of a dimming effect that we have observed from the star. Now hopefully by May 2017 we'll, we'll get to see this dimming effect again so we can actually analyze it a little bit better and try to discover what exactly is happening around the star. But I think it's pretty fair and pretty safe to say that um, it's probably not the aliens like the other YouTube videos claim it, it is. And it's very unlikely to be a large megastructure, mostly because, firstly, the patterns would be a lot more predictable and a lot more easier to observe. Second, we would probably see some kind of an infrared uh, signature coming from these megastructures or some kind of a detectable signal, which SETI did not see at all. And third, because there's just not enough evidence to actually show that this is a megastructure, other than the fact that we've observed a large dim, which we've seen from other stars as well. Like for example, uh, J1407b, the dim was 100%. Uh, the entire star was dimmed by the rings. So it's possible to produce these large dims even without any kind of a megastructure. And anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you will subscribe and like and share this video with your friends. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about this particular star known as Tabby star or WTF star and have also learned to think critically, scientifically, and more specifically, learn how to take any kind of a video about aliens with a grain of salt. Now, I personally do not discredit aliens, but I think it will need a little bit more proof before we can actually confidently say that there are aliens and intelligent aliens out there. And we'll actually talk about uh, this topic in more detail in one of the future videos, but for now, I am fairly certain that Tabby Star is very likely alien-free, but most likely has a really cool phenomenon going around it. And hopefully by next year, we'll know exactly what it is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Give me later. Bye-bye.